It's a new year, a new season, and we are underway. Really dominating fashion here today is going to win. Two, three, four for the final time. Win number one of the season, only just barely. He is going to win here at the Nazareth Speedway. Wins the Emerson Electric 100K. going to be Igor Moretto's going to eke it out. Cup Series champion is Shane Lake in the number 15. Welcome to the NOF SRL. The big race, the Indianapolis 250, is coming up in just two days. But before we run that great event, we have another great event to run for the seventh year in a row. We are back again at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway today for qualifying in the Freedom 50 in the NOFSRL Singtel Indy Light Series. Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and welcome back to the Art of Bricks, the greatest place in the world, as we continue on with Indy 250 Week here on AG Racing. This is qualifying for the Freedom 50. For the first time ever in the Freedom 50, we're going to be doing single car qualifications. I can't get enough of this stuff. I actually got to be honest, I really enjoy doing Indy 250 qualifying. And uh, I figured, you know, why not do it again here for Freedom 50 qualifying? Even though it's only a 20-lap race tomorrow at noon Eastern time, why not have some fun? You guys absolutely love single car qualifying, and, uh, you know, this is this is the last time I'm going to do it in 2021. Um, no doubt about it. But uh, we're here to set the starting lineup for the Freedom 50, and it's pretty straightforward and simple. Every driver gets one lap, the fastest time wins the pole, and the lineup is set from there. It's no eliminations, no extra rounds, just one lap for every driver, and that will set the starting lineup. And that does come into the play for this race. Last year, Keegan Thompson, the defending winner of this Freedom 50, ended up leading, I think, 18, maybe 17 laps in last year's Freedom 50. You gotta start up front, because passing is likely gonna be difficult in this event tomorrow afternoon. So, should be a fun session. Um, we're not gonna, we're gonna cut to the chase pretty quickly here today. Uh, this is how they line up for the Freedom 50 qualifying order. Um, and it is based off of Napa Fan wins, then Napa Fan starts. So, the top two guys in line have never made a start before on Napa Fan. The 05 of Ryan Miniker and the 5 of Jason Dady. Those two drivers will go out first. Brennan Wilmington in the 79, Arthur Xavier in the 52, Ben Crouch in the 37, Blake Parker in the 73, Stephen Cologne in the 81, Dale Lightning in the 36, Josh Williamson in the 94, Travis Crampton in the 92, 82, excuse me, Priya McShane in the 97, Dennis Stryker in the 99, Andrew Williams in the 15, Scott Upton in the 27, Landon Smith Jr. in the 75. Keegan Thompson in the number 8. Chase Harris in the number 35. Nathan Baird in the 54. Daniel Bouchard in the 46. And Eric Monaco in the number 1. And uh, no drivers get eliminated, so it's all about where you start. And you do want to start up front for this 20 lap race tomorrow. Let's go ahead and get it started here, not waste any more time. Ryan Minnicker going to be the first driver out on the racetrack here in Freedom 50 qualifying. Here we go for the first driver of the day here in Freedom 50 qualifying. Ryan Miniker going to be his first career Napa fan start tomorrow in this Freedom 50. So we don't have anything to say about him coming into this event. You got to think too, there's no practice session for these guys either. Uh, pulling the old NASCAR trick. Um, but hey, for NR you don't really need practice. It's, uh, it's a video game. But uh, should be interesting to see uh, what the speeds are for these guys. Because I actually have a feeling that they're going to be faster than uh, IndyCar was for the very fact that it's much cooler, the sun isn't beating down directly on the racetrack, and while that isn't realistic to how the Freedom 100 used to be, obviously in the Freedom 100 these cars used to really fly around, or used to go only about 200 miles per hour, I should say, quite the opposite of flying around this racetrack. Um, the Freedom 100 doesn't exist anymore, and it really doesn't matter, so... But the racing is actually much different between this mod and the uh, newer IndyCar mod. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it all goes down. But these guys are actually going much, much faster. 221, 222, as you see, 223 in the turn number three. It should be very interesting to see what uh, these times we end up getting here today. But uh, it's just the way it rolls. These guys run very fast around this place in these Indy Lights machines. And the 05 of Ryan Minnick are going to come across the line, and this is going to be faster than any time we've seen all weekend. 41 1 7 8. So Minnicker, top of the board with the fastest time we have seen all weekend here in a single car run in Indy 250 week. 
Next driver in line, another first timer, Jason Dady, number five. Should be very interesting to see what he can pull off here compared to that 41 170. We were going 223 in the turn number three on that lap. That's something we didn't we didn't even hit 220 at all, I don't think, in Indy 250 qualifying. But uh, hey, that's just the way it is sometimes. So we'll have to see what Dady can do on the five machine. Gonna get a bit of a comparison time here for uh, the number five compared to the 05 machine. But uh, they're definitely uh, picking up some pretty good speed there, especially off of uh, turn number four. And already, they're crossing the line at the time that these guys were entering turn number one. 221 across the line for Jason Dady. He almost hit 223 into the corner. Not entirely sure what Miniker did in that last lap, but uh, definitely going to be interesting to see what the number five machine can do here. 213 off a of turn number two. I've had a long day. Went to work today, and that always wears me out. 223. He may hit 224, possibly. He was in 223 for quite a while right there. This is more than likely going to beat Miniker's time, no doubt about it. 213, 212. He drops down the 210 for just a split second off the exit of turn four. But coming across the line, Jason Dady is going to go to a 40.992, and that'll go to the top of the board for Jason Dady in his first career Napa fan start. Next driver in line, number 79 of Brennan Wilmington, and I think he's only made one start in the past, and that came in the Thanksgiving 500 last year when he finished runner-up. I'm um, going to have to see, though, what he can do in this year's Freedom 50. Obviously, we saw the time that Jason Dady set right there under 41 seconds. And uh, we'll have to see. He went 223 for an extended period of time in the turn number three. Nearly hit 223, entering turn number one. So if we see Brady Wilmington, or should I say Brandon Wilmington, hit that uh, 223 mark, which he's not even going to come close to that. This is looking like a much slower time, unfortunately, for Brandon Wilmington, number 79. Normally, I don't allow name changes. For Brennan's case, though, um, he only made one career start, and with that... It kind of just let it let it slide, so... I don't know. I, I try to be a little bit more easygoing. He's not even going to hit 223 and return number three. So this this looks like this will probably be a third-place time here for Brendan Wilmington. But uh, the good thing about this is that no one fails to qualify. All 20 drivers will be in the race tomorrow at noon Eastern time. So Brendan Wilmington, not the best of times right there. 41.279. It'll go to third of three drivers who have gone out so far here in Freedom 50 qualifying. Arthur Xavier, fourth driver out here in Freedom 50 qualifying, number 52 machine. And I don't think we've run into a driver who is only running the Freedom 50, so I haven't really touched on it too much. This is the Singtel Indy Light Series. Hair Joe's going to be doing the rest of the season on his channel. If you check in the Discord, we'll link all the uh, races in there. But I'll be doing the Freedom 50 this year, and, and I, like from my perspective, it is kind of more so a special event. Uh, but there is a series attached to this. There will be points awarded, and there's not not only that, there's actually owners in the series as well. I have not touched up on that. At least from my perspective, this is a special event. Um, but this race will be awarding points towards that series, and Hergio will be taking care of the rest uh, throughout the season. Uh, doesn't look like this is going to be as fast of a time as Jason Dady had, but uh, Arthur E. Xavier has not made too many starts in Ebfan before. Uh, does have some experience in the Body Armor Cup Series. It was definitely a little bit slow there off a of turn number four. This may be the slowest time so far, and not quite. 41.269. That'll go to third overall, just ahead of Brady Wil or Brennan Wilmington. That's going to be tough. I Changed your name on me, man. Uh, next guy in line, Ben Crouch in number 37. Ben Crouch, next driver in line here, number 37 machine. And uh, Ben Crouch has been running in the Turkey Hill National Series this season, so uh, he's got a few more starts than uh, all the other guys who have already gone out. It should be an interesting uh, time to see uh, what he can do. Only one driver so far under 41 seconds. That's Jason Dady in the five. Let's see what Ben Crouch can do. As these guys get more experience as we go along throughout the session, it should be... Uh, you would expect, you would anticipate the times to get faster, but that's not how it works. Everyone has equal ratings, so. 220 across the line. 
This is a pretty fast time, but not quite as fast as I as Dady's time, I do believe. But it should be a pretty close one here. To 13 is a minimum, I do believe, off of turn number two. We'll have to see what the 37 can do entering turn number three. Will he hit 223? Yes, he will. Didn't hold it for as long as Dady, though. I think this might be second fastest overall here for Ben Crouch. But it's still going to be a good time. And like I said, this race is one where you do want to start up front. Now, past couple of years, we've seen guys kind of dominate. Now, in 2019, we had a lot of passing going on at the end of the race. We did not see that last year. 41-0-8-1. That'll be second overall for Ben Crouch in the 37. Uh, but like I said, this isn't a race that, that sees a lot of passing like the Indy 250 usually does. It's a little bit different of an arrow kit for these guys. And uh, you definitely want to start up front. But uh, Ben Crouch might have the opportunity to do so with that 41-0-8-1. Blake Parker, next driver out in the line. Another driver who's been running in the Turkey Hill National Series this season. I think a lot of these guys we're kind of coming up upon have been running in the Turkey Hill National Series this year. Not a lot of experience in this race. This is a race where, you know, obviously there aren't any reserves that, that come with this race. So it's kind of just whoever ends up signing up. Um, that was weird. Doesn't lag out like that too often. Ugh. I had the game open for quite a while, and then I started doing this. So that might be part of the reason why. But either way, Blake Parker in the number 73. And we'll have to see if he goes under 41 second time. Of course, the 40.992, the fastest time set by Jason Dady in the 5. Blake Parker looking pretty fast, though. Will he hit 223? He was in 222 for quite a while right there. This could be a time that contends for the top spot in this Freedom 50. Going to be a minimum of 213 off of turn number three. That's a good good amount of speed there off the corner for the driver, the number 73. We'll have to see if he can pull it off here entering turn number three. 223 there for quite some time entering the corner. And with the cloudy weather that we have, it's definitely a lot cooler than it was over the weekend when we did Indy 250 qualifying, and therefore these guys are going much faster than the Indy cars did. Blake Parker might go to the top of the board with this one, and he will not. 41.052, that goes to second. Jason Dady still the fastest driver here in Freedom 50 qualifying. Seventh driver of the day here in Freedom 50 qualifying, Stephen Cologne, number 81 machine. This is the first driver who is in... Freedom 50 only driver. I almost said Indy 250 only driver. None of these guys are going to be in the Indy 250 this year. Had that happened in the past. Um, but Steve McAlone, number 81, has also been running in the Turkey Hill National Series. So uh, going to be interesting to see what he can pull off here in the 81 machine. And he's actually had a pretty solid season um, as well in the Turkey Hill National Series. And he's, you know, how, how do you relate the experience over there to, to this race? But... Uh, Turkey Hill National Series was here a couple days ago, and Turkey Hill National Series is going to be running tonight at Charlotte, so we're excited for that coming up at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Across the line, Cologne looking pretty... F mm, didn't hit 222. This will probably be a time around fourth place, right around Ryan Minnicker's time. 81 to Stephen Cologne. Jason Dady said a really fast time so far. Still the only driver under 41 seconds here in Freedom 50 qualifying. So it's going to be interesting to see if he can hold that off. Cologne did hit 223 for a little bit there. But I don't think this is going to be enough to uh, beat Dady's time. He didn't have enough speed in the turn number one. And he did hit 209 just for a little bit there off of turn number four. So Stephen Cologne looking at around fourth place for him right here. 41-143. I think I know what I'm doing. He did go to fourth place right there in between Ben Crouch and Ryan Miniker. Next driver in line, Dale Lightning in the number 36. So Dale Lightning here going to be his first Freedom 50. I don't think we've uh, run into a driver who's been in multiple Freedom 50s yet. Um, and we haven't, so we only have, let's see here, one, you have six guys who have been in this race before, including the past winner of this race, Keegan Thompson. Uh, but Dale Lightning has actually had a development driver in this race twice before, Justin Lightning, so in theory this is Dale Lightning's third run, but uh, Dale Lightning himself has not actually run this event before, so technically this is his first Freedom 50, but uh, Justin Lightning has run this event the past two years. Dale Lightning, of course... Uh, I was actually kind of surprised when looking at the uh, Napa Fan wins list. Dale Lightning has never won before on Napa Fan. 
Uh, definitely surprised me. I actually thought he had gotten one before. We'll have to see what speed he hits. Does not hit 222. So that's going to be interesting to see how that translates later on. But I don't think this is going to be a pole time for Dale Lightning. I don't know if anyone's going to get the Jason Data here today. That's a very solid time that he put up there. And uh, he could be able to hold that on. We'll have to see. Dale Lightning may pick up some speed down the backstretch. Uh, he's not even going to hit 223. So this is probably going to be around the sixth position. I think it's going to be faster than Arthur Xavier's time, but I don't know if it's going to be as fast as Ryan Minnicker's time. Delaney hit 209 off the corner. And it will not be fast enough for the pole. Delaney going to go to a 41.186. I know, I, know, I know what I'm doing. I'm predicting these guys pretty well. Lightning goes to 6 overall in the first 8. Next guy in line, Josh Williamson, number 94. Josh Williamson, this is going to be his first ever run in the Freedom 50. Hopefully I haven't referred to it as the Indianapolis 250 tonight. I probably have at some point. Um, I've been doing this so much lately. Uh, but Williamson, I think it's the last of these drivers who have not won on Napa Fan before. So nine of these guys have never won a race on Napa Fan before. Eleven of them have. And of course one of them, Keegan Thompson, has won this race. Uh, this exact race and he did it one year ago where he led he dominated this race 17 laps led so Well, let's see what Williamson can do here number 94 machine And Williamson this is another one of the freedom 50 only drivers So this will be the only race he runs in the scene tell any light series and uh, doesn't look like he's gonna win the pole did not hit 222 entering turn number one like Jason Dady did, and that number five machine may just be the fastest car out here. Now, granted, we have a lot of the more experienced guys coming up. Williamson does have a lot of experience, though. Even though he's never won before in Fan, he does have a lot of experience. Not going to hit 223. He's probably going to be closer to Arthur Xavier's time. Might be a little bit faster than the 52. He could split Xavier and Wilmington, though. So not, not the best of times here for the 94 machine. 209, they're off the corner. I think this is probably going to go 7th, just a little bit ahead of Arthur Xavier at the stripe. He's going to go 41.197. I did it again. That's like three in a row I've predicted correctly. Williamson goes to 7th, 41.197 for the driver, the number 94. Next driver line, Travis Crampton. After Crampton will be halfway through Freedom 50 qualifying here from Indianapolis and Surprisingly enough, this is Crampton's first ever run in this 3 to 50. He actually ran, though, in the Indianapolis 251 one year when I didn't know how to do custom cars. And I actually, uh, I think I used a user car instead of an AI car. And you may notice this, I think this was 2018 Indy 500, or Indy 250. And his car was, the ride height on his car was much higher than everybody else's. It looked kind of weird. Um... Don't have that problem anymore. I actually knew what I... I didn't know what I was doing at the time, uh, but now I do. But uh, Travis Crampton, number 82, has run in the Indianapolis 250 before. He's going to hit 222 entering turn number one, but he didn't hold it for too long. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do though in the turn number three. If he can hold 223 for quite a while, he could be up there. Just going to have to see. Crampton has won before on Napa Fan. I don't remember what race it was, but he does have an Napa Fan win under his belt. He's barely going to hit 223. I think this is going to be a little bit faster than Williamson's time, but I don't know if it's going to be faster than Lightning's time. I'm going to go ahead and predict that he will be faster than Lightning, but not faster than Miniker. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to say he's going to be right in the sixth position with this lap time. Narrow window. Oh, he's much faster than that. Fourth quickest. 41-1-3-0. That was a good time out of Crampton. Well, my prediction streak is done. Well, halfway now through Freedom 50 qualifying. Jason Diddy's still the fastest, but Travis Crampton goes up to fourth overall in the first ten drivers. Eleventh driver here for Freedom 50 qualifying. This is Priya McShane. Her first ever run in an open wheel machine here in Napa Fan. Uh, she actually won a race in the Turkey National Series at Atlanta, but that, as far as I know, is her only top ten over there in the series. Been a bit of a rough season for her over there outside that one race victory, but this is a completely different form of motorsport, so should be interesting to see how it all goes down for her here in the Freedom 50. We get to have anybody come close to Jason Dady's time of 40.992. Everybody else has been over 41 seconds. I finally got it right this time. During Indy 250 qualifying, I kept on saying under. I was like, no, it's over. 
Across the line, she's going to be 220 across the line. She's going to hit 222 and hold it for quite a while. This may be a time that competes with the 5 machine. We're just going to have to see. Going to be a 213 exit. Oh, she barely hit 212. For the slightest little bit of time, she hit 212. That may be enough to knock her to second, but this is looking like a really fast time. She'll hit 223. Held it for a little bit right there. I, f I feel like this is going to be second. I don't think it's going to be fast enough to beat the 5 machine. I could be wrong, though. We're just going to have to see. 210 off the corner. She did not hit 209, so this is looking like a pretty fast time for the number 97 of Priya McShane across the line. It's going to be 41.077. That's third fastest for Priya McShane. Very solid time here after 11 drivers have gone out here in Freedom 50 qualifying. 12th driver in line, Dennis Stryker, number 99 machine. He's been running in the Turkey National Series as well. Got to win at Armory Digital in that really messed up race at Armory Digital. Joey Hightower, surprisingly enough, actually made his debut on Abafan in the IndyCar Series. I think it was 2019, either 2018 or 2019, one of those two years. Uh, I want to say he was in this race at some point too, but I, I can't quite remember if he was or not. But uh, should be interesting to see what Dennis Stryker can do. Obviously, uh, got that. Super Speedway win in the Turkey on National Series at Armory Digital. Should be interesting to see what he can do right here. See what kind of time he clocks in across the line. It looks like this might be hmm, going to be a little bit slower than McShane's, I think. Did not hit 222, so this is probably going to be around the 6th or 7th position, I do believe. Maybe a little bit lower, actually. But uh, either way... You can still, as long as you start on that inside lane, especially early on, you can definitely work your way through the field. I mean, we, we saw it happen in 2019 when John Arndt won this race to win his 18th career Napa fan win. The striker was not uh, not too fast there entering turn number three. This is probably, hmm, he's going to hit 209. It's probably going to be around Dale Lightning, Josh Williamson's time, I do believe, for Dennis Stryker. Across the line, going to be 41.167. A little bit faster than I thought. That's seventh overall there for Dennis Stryker. So, middle of the road there for the driver, the number 99. And here's the first driver who was in this race last year. Andrew Williams, number 15, brother to Logan Williams. And Logan Williams is going to be racing in the Indianapolis 250 a couple days from now. But uh, both Andrew and Logan were in this race last year. Um... But Logan has since moved up to the Haas IndyCar Series for the 2021 season. Andrew Williams here, number 15 machine. We'll have to see what he can do. And uh, like I said, the first guy coming in this qualifying season who has run this race before. One of six guys who have run this race before. Eric Monaco, Keegan Thompson, Scott Upton, Nathan Baird, and Landis Smith Jr., the other five. Andrew Williams across the line. This is a tight one, not going to hit 222, so this is going to be another one of those kind of middle-of-the-road times, I do believe. So, it just keeps keeps on, you know, falling in that line there, kind of right in between everybody. And uh, nobody's been able to get the Jason Dady yet in this session. Going to be interesting to see if the true rookie can start on the pole for this Freedom 50. Andrew Williams held 222 for a while, but could not hit 223, so... I would imagine this is probably going to be a little bit closer to the, probably around Dennis Stryker's time. It'll be right around that uh, driver, number 99 machine. We'll have to see what Williams does across the line. Number 15 going to go to a 41.197. That actually ties Josh Williamson, but Andrew Williams is farther up in the order of qualifying, so he does break the tie with Williamson. So Andrew Williams goes to 10th. Williamson goes down to 11th. Next driver in line, Scott Upton, who was also in this race last year, and he's another one of the Freedom 50 only drivers, driving the number 27 machine. Uh, this car, this car is interesting. I know Harry Hairchild painted this whole set. They're all Mazdas, by the way. I haven't mentioned that. This one, this one's, in, this one's interesting. You yeah, know, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with a green car. They always said, though, that green's an unlucky no uh, color for a car. I don't know why they say that. Though. I don't think there's much truth to that. But uh, Scott Upton here ran this race last year, running it again. I'll have to see what kind of time he puts up here, see what kind of speed he gets across the line. And he, ooh, he almost hit 220 when he crossed the line. Could not hit 222, so 
Once again, it looks like Jason Dady is safe in that top position. He was the second driver to go out, and so far he has been able to hold on to this pole position here in Freedom 50 qualifying. Now on the back stretch goes the number 27. Entering turn number three, Upton is not going to hit 223. This might be right along with uh, Andrew Williams' time. Williams and Williams Sim tied. <laughs> Very similar names right there, as you can see. But Scott Upton here, number 27. I think it might be a little bit faster than Williams just a moment ago. 41.201, not quite. Upton goes to 12th overall. That was really close. But Upton just a tad bit slower than Williams and Williamson right there. Upton will go to 12th. 15th driver of the day, Landon Smith Jr., number 75. Once again, another driver who was in this race last year. Maybe, nah, it wasn't a debut for him. I don't know if any of these guys made their debut in this race last year and are running this year. Um, actually, a Andrew Williams may uh, be the only one. I think Andrew Williams did make his debut in this race last year. Um, obviously, he's been running Turkey National Series this season. Got a win at Auto Club. Uh, qualified 10th a little bit earlier. See what Landon Smith Jr. can do in the 75 machine here. And across the line, 219. This is looking like one of the slower times so far. Going to barely hit 221 right there. So once again, and this is something we saw a lot in the uh, Fast 9 shootout in the Indianapolis 250 qualifying session back on Sunday. Um, up until the end, though, um, none of those guys were really getting any faster than we thought they were. Um, the thing is, early in that session, no one had actually set a time like Dady did. It was kind of just like everyone was slow. And then Al Isaac came in and beat everybody at the end. Uh, here, though, you know, Dady set that fast time, but no one's been able to catch him. Landon Smith Jr. going to come across the line here. This is going to be one of the slower times, I do believe, at the stripe 41.211. That'll be 13th overall of 15 drivers who have gone out. Next driver in line, it's the defending champion of the Freedom 50, Keegan Thompson, in the number 8. And here he is, Keegan Thompson, defending champion of this Freedom 50. You kind of hate it for him that he missed out on a full-time IndyCar Series ride this year, but hey, he's going to be going for it again here in this uh, big event. You know, Freedom 50 is a pretty big deal. You know, even though it's only a 20-lap race, I, I still think, you know, you know, we don't do many special events on this channel. It, it's definitely a pretty... Pretty big deal to win this race, especially considering that a lot of the guys who have won it in the past. I mean, you got the 2019 Indy 250 champion, Audra Baranowskis, who has won this race before. His top across the line, 220. Did not hit 223, but did hit 222 in turn number one. This is like a pretty sporty time for a defending champion. But Audra Baranowskis won this race in 2018. John Arndt, tied all-time winning his driver, won this in 2019. Obviously, Keegan Thompson. And Thompson's been doing an excellent job in the NOF Cyril Cup Series this season. He's a very solid driver. He's going to hit 223 right there. Going to hold it for quite a while. I don't know. Dady hit it for quite some time before he uh, let off the 223 in turn three. Thompson is not going to hit 209. Was barely in 210. This is going to be one of the fastest times so far. Will Thompson be able to knock Dady off at the stripe? 41-6-9. <laughs> It's a nice time. Um, third quickest there for Keegan Thompson. That was a close one, but uh, not close enough for the pole. But Keegan Thompson will definitely be starting up front in this year's Freedom 50, going looking to go back-to-back -back in this race. And here comes the defending Haas IndyCar Series champion who, uh, quote-unquote, retired at the end of the season after he won five of the 16 races we ran last year. But uh, I wanted to come back for one more run here, and he's going to do so in the Freedom 50. This is Chase Harris, number 35. Who, well, you know, at the time of last year's Indianapolis 250, he came into the series, you know, didn't know who he was. His first career start was in the Indy 250 last year. Well, who knew uh, about three and a half months later that uh, he'd be Haas IndyCar Series champion with five wins in a 16-race season. That is the highest percentage anyone has ever had. And keep in mind, the ratings were equal the entire season. Chase Harris is not going to hit 222, though, so this is going to be a little bit of a slower time. It's not going to be as fast as Thompson's was. But uh, either way, I'd watch out for Chase Harris in tomorrow's race. No doubt about it, Harris is going to have a very good shot at winning this Freedom 50 for his sixth career Napa fan win. All of them would be in the open wheel machines. Did make a few cup starts last year. But uh, Chase Harris going to... 
probably clock in kind of midway through the field here. It's a solid lap, but not not quite what we saw out of Dady or Blake Parker or Keegan Thompson. Across the line, Chase Harris goes to a 41-179. Just under Ryan Miniker in the 10th position there for the defending Haas IndyCar Series champion of Chase Harris. And here is another champion on Napa Fan, the Season 8 NOFS Earl Cup Series champion of Nathan Baird. Uh, only his now second open wheel start on Napa Fan. Uh, made his debut in open wheel racing last year in the Freedom 50. Going to run it once again in the Papyrus Machine. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know who owns this team technically. <laughs> I never really researched that. I know Landis Smith Jr. Brennan Willington are technically my team. And I know Nathan Stapleton's got pretty much and Dennis Stryker on his team. Outside of that, and I think McLaren, the 8 and 37 are Harajil's team. Outside of that, I really don't know who's who in terms of the teams. But like I said, we're treating this as a special event. Uh, but Nate DeBear going to be a second Indy, or Freedom 50, I should say. It's not the Indy 250, it's the Freedom 50. Much shorter race. Cross the line at 219. I don't know if he's going to hit 222. Doesn't look like he will. So once again, another time that's not going to beat Dady. So we're down to Daniel Bouchard and Eric Monaco. Now, Eric Monaco was in this race in 2019, but did not run this event last year. Monaco also has Haas IndyCar Series experience. Um, in 2018, he ran in the Haas IndyCar Series. So keep that in mind for Monaco. Uh, for Bouchard, I don't know. I don't think Bouchard has ever run in the Open Wheel Series before. Um, we'll have to see how he can do. But Nathan Bear going to be probably right down the middle again. This might actually be a little bit slower than Chase Harris was just a moment ago. But either way, Nathan Baird will have a good opportunity here at this uh, race victory, no doubt about it. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> if he's starting that far back, 16th for Nathan Baird, 41-247, one of the slower times we've seen so far here in Freedom 50 qualifying. Two drivers left, Bouchard and Monaco here at Indianapolis. Two drivers left to go here in Freedom 50 qualifying. Next driver in line, Daniel Bouchard, number 46 machine. I actually thought he had made a start in this race before, but this is going to be his first run in the Freedom 50, so excited to see what he can do. A six-time winner on Napa Fan. He's won a lot on this channel before, so uh, he's got some experience. Definitely one of the most experienced drivers, one of the most experienced drivers in this Freedom 50 field. Of course, he'll be running the full season as well in the Indy Light Series. We'll have hair gel in the booth tomorrow for tomorrow's Freedom 50, of course, since he'll be running the rest of the series, so definitely excited to have that. He was in the booth last year as well. But uh, Marty won't be calling the race this year. I'll, I'll be calling it this year. I want to call it this year. Bouchard almost 220 across the line. Does he hit 222? Does not, but he held 221 for a while. But uh, Jason Dady is looking like he's going to start on the pole for this race, only unless Eric Monaco. Now, we saw in the Fast 9 shootout in Haas IndyCar Series um, when Al Legacy was the last guy to go out, and he went ahead and won the pole. Uh, I don't know if Monaco is going to do that, but we'll, we're just going to have to see. But uh, Jason Dady was the second guy to go out here tonight, and he looks like that he's going to get this pole position, only unless Monaco beats him. Uh, Bouchard's going to probably be in the bottom half of this field. That wasn't the best of times right there. It's 212 off the corner. 41-168. Ah, I'm wrong about that. Ninth for Daniel Bouchard. So solid time there, especially if you can serve that inside lane. That's going to give him a good opportunity of possibly winning. One more driver left. It's Eric Monaco in the number one. Last driver of Freedom 50 qualifying. Eric Monaco in the number one. And uh, ran this race in 2019. It was not in this race last year, but has nine career Napa fan wins. Five of those coming last year in the Hurst Dash Series. But this is his first start of 2021 on Napa fan. Uh, unfortunately, missed out on the uh, series that ran, that have been running, Cup Series and Turkey Hill National Series. So... Definitely excited to see him back on the racetrack, and uh, if he can get a good starting position for this race, he's going to have a good shot of winning. I think he's one of the best drivers in this field. I'm pretty sure Keegan Thompson, though, would definitely love him to qualify below him, because Thompson's got a prime position in this starting lineup, and obviously Thompson led 17 laps in this race last year to go and take the race victory. And Monaco uh, barely hit 219 off the corner there, so that's probably a good sign for Keegan, Keegan Thompson there. But uh, Eric Monaco, it's a little bit slow there coming across the line, and it looks like Jason Dady is going to win the pole for the Freedom 50. But uh, as for Eric Monaco, let's see where he ends up starting here in the number one machine. 
221 there entering turn number one or turn number three I should say this may be one of the slowest times that we have seen so far 209 he almost yeah he was in 209 for quite a while right there not gonna come close Jason Dady's gonna win the freedom 50 pole Eric Monaco gonna go 41 3 2 2 that goes all the way to the bottom for Eric Monaco so he'll qualify 20th. Jason Beatty has won the poll for the Freedom 50. So that will do it here for Freedom 50 qualifying. There are the official results here from the qualifying session. Jason Dady and Blake Parker will lead us to the green flag in the front row. Keegan Thompson, Priya McShane in row number two. Ben Crouch, Travis Crampton in row three. Stephen Cologne, Dennis Stryker in row four. Daniel Bouchard, Ryan Miniker in row five. Chase Harris, Dale Lightning in row six. Andrew Williams, Josh Williamson in row seven. Scott Upton, Landon Smith Jr. in row eight. Nathan Baird, Arthur Xavier in row nine. Brennan Wilmington, Eric Monaco in row number 10. And that'll be tomorrow at noon Eastern time right here on AG Racing. And I know it's probably not the best time for it because most of y'all probably either in school or work or something like that. But hey, that's when it would be in real life if they were still having it. Uh, that's one That's one L that uh, Roger Penske has taken when he t has taken over IndyCar. He took away the uh, Freedom 100. And I'm, I'm not happy about that. But hey, we still have it. We're excited for it. And it's all going to commence tomorrow at noon Eastern time right here on AG Racing. And of course, the Indianapolis is going to be Saturday at noon Eastern time. So, uh, about 36, a little bit more than 36 hours from now, but we're excited to see how that all goes down here for Memorial Day weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching tonight's Turkey Hill National Series from Charlotte, CN Rail 300 over there. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern, it's Carb Day for Indy 250, so the Carb Day final practice. And then at noon Eastern time, it's the Freedom 50 with the Coca-Cola 600 tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern time here in AG Racing. Lots to come up this weekend. It's going to be a huge weekend here in the NOFSRL. We're excited to have you every step of the way. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later.